if it you feel god is speaking to you then i would take the dream to him and ask what do you mean by this is there any significance for me is there something here that i need to take note of or understand or, or act upon um and and then you're then going to be clear from god what he is saying the difficulty in dream interpretation it's sort of somewhat subjective and you know you get dream interpretation books that will say well if you dream of a house well that's talking about your life and if you dream of a room in a house well that's part of you and you uh, and you know if you dream of vehicles that's your ministry and things like that and i think that's rather simplistic i was just mentioning the we had that big solar uh flare which caused amazing display of of brilliance and color um you 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 attribute any significance to something like that with regard to father speaking of his goodness and showing uh the great majesty in the skies and a lot of people were able to experience it and felt great uh i think a, you know a great wa uh, awe and wonderment of it all just wanted to see yeah. and hear your reaction to it i mean i mean i think a lot of natural events like that um we can engage and praise god for the wonderful beauty of creation and everything else um i don't put any prophetic significance on any of it i mean it's just it happens all the time you know it's just we may or may not be able to see it depending on where in the world you are it's like you know the whole thing with eclipses and things like that you know eclipses happen every 15 16 months or so and sometimes they happen over the sea and no one really sees them um but they're just natural occurrences um and sometimes the sun puts off you know energy like that now ultimately i think if we're going to be see a restoration of our relationship with creation with the planets with the sun then any harmful radiation that the sun now gives off i think is going to change um now whether the sun has changed in how it's outworked things or whether the earth has changed in that the barriers that were around the earth that protected the earth from particular sun have changed i'm not sure but i do feel that our relationship with the sun needs to be established correctly in that the sun is there to provide um a balanced environment for the whole solar system and therefore restoration will bring about change one way or another to see that that dealt with um but i do um praise god and also just rejoice over natural things i love the natural world i love you know the sort of looking at nature and you know we we spend quite a lot of time looking out the window at the birds and i feed the birds regularly and we've got nesting birds you know i've built a load of nesting boxes so there we've got blue tits and great tits and blackbirds and other birds nesting and magpies they're all nesting in the garden um and we like watching them you know and i feel a sense of connection to creation um, and when something like the northern lights appear um it is an awe inspiring beautiful thing and that always causes me to to think about the the wonder of god and the the, the beauty of the creation as we have it imagine what it was like before you know <laughs> Yeah, and that that's something which i think we want to see a restoration of creation from you know creation is longing and waiting for the sons of god to be revealed what will creation be like when sonship is fully revealed i think it will bring about change um, and transformation in that way um, but i love natural um things waterfalls and just beautiful things you know um that when i look at them it makes me rejoice in god's goodness and wonderful love you know so it's, it's more that type of phenomena you know those people who see prophetic prophetic significance in it 
you know, they're usually doom and gloom merchants. <laughs> oh no, solar flares, the earth is going to be consumed with the fire of God and be burnt up, rah, 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 rah. you know, and the reality is these things have been going on for a long time and there are events which, um, you know, may change in the future, but presently, and they have no prophetic significance. It's not like God caused a solar flare so we can see the northern lights. But God can speak to us through those things if he chooses. And I think there's a difference between something happens and God uses it to speak to us and God makes something happen. You know, and I think that's the difference, you know, in all the things that are heavenly or in the cosmos there's a natural order to things. So the planets do align. It it doesn't mean that that's the end of the world, you know, which is what happens when usually the planets align. <gasps> oh, no, we're going to have this terrible event. You know, it didn't. They just align. You know, there's a revolving, which are naturally they will align. Some will align certain times and others. And when you get all eight of them all aligned, then, you know, that's great. But it doesn't. It's not anything significant, really. Oh, okay, I always have questions, but uh, <laughs> um, so we are re rereading uh, your book into the dark cloud, and we are getting so much more on it the second time. Um, it is really just a wonderful, wonderful book, great revelation. Um, we have been involved, we are involved a lot in our government, uh, in praying for our government, and we are seeing incredible things. Uh, in uh, in each department or departments, uh, from a, a a spiritual discernment perspective, and and um, I'm not sure if that's part of our transformation. I'm not sure if that's part of the, the restoration process. Um, and of course, you know, we've been really studying uh, the soul gates and really understanding. Uh, that more I'm, I'm totally convinced that as as we look at and watch our government go through these changes um we're discerning incredible incredible things um now is that a, is that a normal process uh is it something that we just <clears throat> naturally grow into uh, or is that um uh, or am I over spiritualizing things? I'm not sure. Maybe both. Well, I don't know. Um, I I think certain people have certain mandates and feel connected to to things which are different than others. You know, personally, I don't have any sense of connection for government in a praying. Well, you know, I would support the government in they got a tough job in looking to keep us safe and whatever. You know, and I wouldn't want that job. And therefore, giving them a sense of positive support and prayer, you know, I've got no issue with that whatsoever. Um, it's not something personally that I particularly feel, um, but I know a lot of people do. Uh, ultimately, I don't think any human government has the answer to solve the problems that we face in society. Only God's kingdom. Um, and I'm not sure that we can expect a natural government to operate as if it was God's kingdom. But if there are Christians within government, then they are going to have a positive influence within government. And we should expect that positive influence to have a, a good result. Um, but per se, I think all man-made systems will eventually fall away and we'll see them for what they are. They're, they're our best attempts at doing something which will never match up to God's kingdom. Um, but in the meantime, we live under it. So we, we really need to be see responsibility for ensuring peace with, within our spheres of authority. Um, and when it's a national thing, um, you've got a whole lot of issues around how government works and functions. Um, an insight that God gives to things which may need legislating into, I think is part of our sonship mandate to maintain peace and to look at having an environment which is safe and secure and which is a good place to live, you know, 
Um, now, you can't expect government to do things which are kingdom spiritual dynamics. That's not their job. You know, they're unlikely to um, see the things that we do in the world and operate in the same way as we would towards them. But if you're looking at departments of government, uh, how can we support them operating in a way which is aligned with the things of God, then I think that that's a good aim. And it's a good thing if that's what people feel called to do, to do. Now, ultimately, our problem comes if we're partisan and don't support our government, but will only support the government if our party is in government. That is a problem for a lot of Christians. They, they are very partisan. And therefore, if the government is the party that isn't their one that they want, then they will be anti the government and they'll be negative towards the government and they will run down the government. And that is not a good thing. Even if politically you don't necessarily agree with all the goals or aims that a particular uh, government is doing, that doesn't mean we shouldn't have a perspective of blessing the people in government and wanting those people to be blessed, not undermining them, not criticizing them. Now, of course, if they do things which are contradictory to the love of God and everything else, then we're not going to agree with them. But how we disagree with them can be done in a honoring and loving way and not a way which basically, you know, castigates them and maligns them as if they're doing something deliberately, you know, to hurt us. I don't think any government does things to deliberately hurt their people, but they may not do the things that we like, but they're doing the their best generally under a very difficult situation. Now, obviously this year you've got a, uh, an election cycle coming up um, with the whole potential of all the division that that can cause. You know, and you'll get obviously people very partisan. Um, we've got an election cycle as well this year, you know, and it's pretty much looking like there may well be a change of government in the UK if all the opinion polls are be to be believed. Um, and, you know, whatever the situation is, I will want our government to be blessed and I will not really want ever to undermine them in a very difficult job but privately i don't agree with everything the government do you know i think some of the things they're doing you know it's a total waste of money at the moment um and trying to trying to buy votes but i still will want them to generally do what the best they can for the country in general you know and we have a system where we have an opposition in government that is there to keep the government to account. But I don't like the opposition government undermining the, what the government do on party lines. P policy and different ideology, fair enough. You know, you're not going to have a, a right wing and a left wing type situation. And now both of our parties are pretty much just right and left of the of the center line they're not extreme but you know you're not going to get them doing the sort of policies that another party would always do but that doesn't mean that i don't want them to be blessed and i want them to to do the best they can do under the situation you know and i think when it comes to election cycles it can cause anger and a lot of disruption to the atmosphere of a nation particularly if it becomes antagonistic and particularly nasty and, and sort of some some of elections in some places are very nasty because they're they're become personal and that does not create a good environment for a country to be in when it becomes personal nasty directed into you know and you have potential for that in your country and i think legislating for a peaceful resolution to the election and legislating for um it to be done in a peaceful way is, is certainly not a bad thing because what you don't you know because potentially 
you've got a guy who's you know old and you know maybe um maligned for being old but we don't want to be ageist you know the guy's doing his best you've got another guy who was old and who's up for a whole load of charges in the courts so you've got these dynamics that are going on which is potentially going to polarize the nation when god wants peace and harmony so i think we we need to make sure we don't get on the bandwagon of a political campaign which can create a disruption and a lack of peace within the nation and it's going to be very difficult for that when christians are participating in that a lot as certainly they did in the last cycle i am not really up to date with any prophetic stuff going on i'm just not interested therefore i don't see any of it but last time there was a lot of sort of the fundamentalist sort of prophetic movement who were very much partisan in their approach and really saying that god was partisan god is not on either side of anyone god's on his own side um, and he wants obviously any government to be aligned as closely to his values as possible which would be what his desire is but he's not favoring one above another and i think we've just got to be careful we don't uh, exacerbate any tension but it is great to support um, in prayer and in legislation for a for peace to reign in our nations and there to be an openness in our nations to creativity to the freedom of speech and all those things but when the freedom of speech becomes hateful that is not a good thing you know and i think some people use the excuse well i'm free to say whatever i like to be maligning other people or other religions and other things and i just don't think that is a society that is one that is good to live in you know we want we want to show unconditional love and tolerance and blessing to people no matter what they believe you know and there are some pretty hateful beliefs out there you know but that doesn't mean that the people are not loved by god it just doesn't love what they're saying and doing so we've got to make sure we we maintain the right attitude towards people in whatever they're doing so i you know have certain things that i really don't like i don't like racism i don't like those type of things where people are treated with disrespect and dishonor and you know i don't like that stuff um, but the people who are perpetrating that god loves and i need to love you know but i'm not going to love what they do but how i can deal with that must be not personal towards the person you know, I know some people who try and legislate governmentally, they become very vindictive and God is going to remove that person and he's going to take that person out because blah, blah, blah. And generally they're operating with their own opinions rather than actually, they're not a voice for God because God isn't going to take anybody out. There may be consequences if you do something which is illegal or whatever and it gets found out there are consequences for that you know which which a government and a, and a legal system will look to deal with um you know but god isn't going to remove people from office and kill people or take people out as some i've heard some people praying you know which is like that's not god that's not the heart of god to do any of that even if what they're doing is not fully aligned with God's kingdom, no political party is. And you're just not going to find it. But we will remember government is made up of people voted in by people. And every government has been voted in to power if it's a you know, democratic system. So when someone's been voted in, you've got to respect that that's the majority has voted those people in you know and then support those people in whatever way you can so that they can do the best job they can do within a very difficult dynamic i would not want to be in the political arena you know i would not want that job because you can't win you're going to displease 50 percent of the population virtually and you might please 
half of the others. And even them, you can't please them all the time. So it's a hard job within a system which is, uh, at best, the best we can do. And, it, you know, whether you're Democratic, Republican as a system of democracy or republicanism, or, you know, you've got communism or various varieties of it, or none of it really has the answers to the real issues, which are spiritual. And nations will only really change when the majority of the people begin to listen to God and begin to follow the heart of God, which is to demonstrate love, really. So, but if you're seeing positive results, great. You know, it's, it's, it's certainly a, not a bad thing to help be helping and supporting people who've got a very difficult job to play, you know, and to do. Yeah. Well, we, we definitely see uh, the corruption side of it as much as we can. And when uh, we do legislate, I believe, and even though we haven't ascended into that realm yet, for some reason, I, I already see myself there. Yeah. Uh, standing before <clears throat> angels and the counsel of God and, and speaking to them about earthly things. Um, and so as I see the corruption, we pray for healing and restoration, transformation, wow. salvation. Yeah. And we're actually praying that uh, people would become deconstructed in their soul, which is really the problem. Mm. I, I would. And it's our problem. Um mm. And, and it's my problem because it's part of what God is doing in our lives as reconstruction takes takes that process. Yeah. So now we're able to see things in, in others, and particularly myself when I pray for a government uh, daily. I, I listen, I see, I hear, and I say, God, these are your children. These are your sons. So now I know that sons of God can be corrupt in areas of their soul realm. And so I believe this is what needs to, to take place. God, it, God does that. We can't do that. Mm. The, the spirit of God does that. And um, as we release angels to minister to, to people, we, we pray that, that they would see the light and come into the light and make those changes. I mean, I could be wrong. And, and if I'm wrong, please correct me because I, mm. I, I can't get away from this area. I'm drawn to it. It's like, okay, let's let's release, let's make some changes, and and let's let's uh, yeah. hope God uh, really moves. Uh, yeah, I'm mean, absolutely. Uh, you know, you're not wrong because you're out working your heart. You know, and and that's that's not going to be wrong uh, at all. Um, yeah, every, every system is fallible because, as you say, it's made up of people. And, you know, we got to look and say, would we be any different in that dynamic under the pressures that they face? Um, and but it's hard when the some of the systems are not really set up to help people succeed. <laughs> they, they make it harder, you know, and and I think, you know, a, a system which allows political lobbying with potential financial incentives is always going to make it difficult for those people, you know, and. Yeah, you know, it's hard sometimes with the pressures that people are under. And I think that's where people's prayer support and encouragement for that people would make the right decisions, that they wouldn't get drawn off into, you know, the, the issues that the soul or, or sometimes even their personal needs. You know, if you're struggling with something and then someone offers you something, it can be hard to say no. You know, and I, and I, I feel for people who are in those situations you know, to, to maintain integrity. And I think that's what, you know, what I would want from government is integrity. You know, that they would stick to their values, stick to their, their, their principles and operate with integrity. Even though I might not agree with all their values and principles, I still want them to, to, to operate with integrity and not to be popularist. I mean, popularist is just like, well, what will get me the votes? How can I get popular with people? I'll change with the people. That That is not integrity. You know, and I think we want people who are, have integrity. And even if that integrity costs them in the long run, I think people with integrity are the, the people who make the, 
the best decisions they can from the place they're in. And that's what we want. You know, you, you want them to operate with that sense of um, integrity, I think, is the best word to describe it, you know, and not be swayed around by a public opinion and everyone calling them to do this, that and the other, and then them giving in to public opinion and actually, you know, public, public opinion is not always the best, you know, because we are generally as the public operate wanting the best for us. And it's generally fairly self-centered. And I, I know I was talking to someone the other day uh, about, well, voting and what, they, and they said, well, I vote on economic basis always. So I said, well, what do you mean? And I was like, well, I'm an economist. You know, I got an economy degree. So I, I vote for those who I think will manage the economy the best. So I said, okay, well, that's interesting. You know, I don't. <laughs> I, I vote for, well, I vote whoever God tells me to vote for. But in general, if I was to say, what is my way? Well, I vote for those who will reflect God's heart the best towards the poor and the, and the destitute and the lonely and the hurting and the people. Yeah, you know, that is that is what my heart is. Therefore, I want people like me, you know, in government. You know, that, that's how that's how we vote, isn't it? In generally. And but people vote on different reasons. A lot of people vote for whoever will give them more money in their pocket. You know, that's not my primary thing, because I know God is my provider, not the government or not the economy or not the economic system. Therefore, you might be in a recession, but you can thrive with the blessing of God. You know, you don't have to be subject to what's going on and be under those circumstances when we have God for us. You know, if God is for us, well, who can be against us? And I think even in situations of economic hardship, we should have an expectation of God's provision for us in it, rather than, well, I, I'll vote for whoever can give me the most money in my pocket. When in reality, that might mean a lot of other people suffer. And I don't want people to suffer. So I, I sort of have have a social conscience for society in general rather than me in particular you know and i think you know when you're praying and ministering it's like you want people to be blessed so they can be a blessing to those around them to people in general and to the country in general so definitely a very positive thing to have it's not something that's my major focus but you know definitely in support of of that i have a question about dreams like i have very vivid dreams yeah and bizarre dreams and sometimes i have really boring dreams where like i'll see the weather today or something and i'm like what do i do with these things like <laughs> just i guess like, yeah. my question is how do you process your dreams um you're probably talking to the wrong person when it comes to dreams because I, I I do dream, I guess, but I don't really remember any of them. And I don't think God really speaks to me in dreams because he can speak to me directly. You know, but it does talk about old people having dreams and, and all that stuff, which doesn't mean that you can only have dreams if you're old, obviously. Um, but it is generally it's basically saying God will speak to anybody any way he can. Um if it you feel god is speaking to you then i would take the dream to him and ask what do you mean by this is there any significance for me is there something here that i need to take note of or understand or, or act upon um and and then you're then going to be clear from god what he is saying the difficulty in dream interpretation it's sort of somewhat subjective and you know you get dream interpretation books that will say well if you dream of a house well that's talking about your life and if you dream of a room in a house well that's part of you and you uh, and you know if you dream of vehicles that's your ministry and things like that and i think that's rather simplistic it's not that god couldn't do that but 
I think I think he'd rather communicate in ways which are more clear. Then you don't have this sort of what's that I mean? What's that about? You know, because it's like it's another step, isn't it? I mean, Jesus did say, "My sheep will hear my voice." Not, well, I'll give them dreams that are bizarre and need wild interpretation. So, I do, I do believe God does. I mean, I think probably in my whole life, I think there have been a couple of dreams which did either warn me of something or direct me to think about something, and then I did. But none that I had to directly sort of action something on but it was something that i felt oh maybe this is god a lot of dreams are just the soul's way of processing life mm -hmm. you know so you know if you're watching a particular thing or you have a particular emphasis on something you may dream about it or you know so i wouldn't put too much significance on every single dream having a meaning or an interpretation and you need to find it out I tended to think, is some, is this something God is communicating? And what is it? And then I will go back to God with it. And then I'll probably ask him, look, can you speak to me directly next time? Because, you know, this was confusing. Or I didn't understand. Now, some people did get dreams which were very much, this is going to happen tomorrow. And when, when you see this happening tomorrow, here's what you should do. And, you know, I, I've read a couple of books by people who were like, whoa, everything of their life they came, they saw in a dream. You know, they knew exactly where they were going to go the next day and they were going to go to that door and then they were going to see this person. And it was like, well, this is like the future playing out in front of them. I don't think that is the 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 rule. And, you know, this this book was quite interesting and this person wouldn't do anything until he saw what he was going to do in a dream which i thought well well what happens if you don't get a dream today you're not going to get out of bed you know it's like it can end up pretty extreme if you're really thinking this is the only way that you should be led um but i know god has spoken to people in dreams and i know i i, I can interpret dreams you know and i and I, I can interpret symbolism but i wouldn't do it generally unless god really said to me to do it because then you're then you're mediating for somebody you know and it's it's big business in some areas where people do dream interpretations for money you know and a, a friend of mine actually the other day i was talking to a friend um and he basically said he was in the gym and there was this lady who came in and he she started telling people about her dream and he knew what the meaning was. And so he sort of into to God, well, should I tell her? And God said, well, wait until after the class. And he did. He went and said to her, this is the first part of your dream. And this is what I feel it means. And God has given me this for you. And she was like, whoa. But she really resonated with what he said. And then the next week he went in and he said, well, no, God's given me permission to give you the second half of the dream interpretation now um but she wasn't a believer yet but he god sort of gave him the interpretation and it helped her you know so sometimes we can do something like that because it could help somebody you know, but in a christian setting you know i wouldn't want to be you know the the dream guru that everyone comes with their dreams because it'd be like some people's dreams are so complex and inconvoluted and you've got to try and navigate through weird stuff which you know I, I just rather not you know to be honest um but a lot of dreams i think some people it is just you know an overflow of the soul's need to process things that are happening in their life and sometimes it can even be that to say oh there's something going on that i need to think about why am i always dreaming about this therefore it could be a pointer to the soul needing some area of of the dealing with you know um yeah. so but you know i know a lot of people dreams seem to be the way god communicates the most whereas for me it will be the way god communicates the least you know so i i don't really 
uh, a personal experience of having a lot of dreams. And for probably for years, I'd never remembered any dreams whatsoever. You know, just never remembered them. Uh, more recently, I've sort of, you know, woken up and in the midst of a dream. And it was like, oh, oh, well, that was interesting. Um, but never felt there was any real significance in it from God, that it was God speaking. I just woke up in the middle of it. And generally, if you wake up in the middle of the dream, it's there, there. And but if I don't think about it for two minutes, it's gone, and I don't remember any of it, you know. Um, yeah. you know, it's just the way it is. Um, but I would always take it back to God. You know, that's the always the best thing. God is the best one who can give you the right insight into whether it's Him, whether it's just your soul, you know, what it is. And some people may have disturbed dreams, which is a result of trauma in their life, which is coming out through their dreams. So some people who have night terrors and other negative dreams, often that can be trauma, which is coming out in a dream. And sometimes it can be buried trauma that is dissociated from. And the dream is the only way that that trauma can surface. Um, and I have known people who have had night terrors and different things, but it is generally um, actually, there were, you know, I know someone you know, quite close to me who really had really bad night terrors and and severe night terrors and i i you know i i just didn't know why or couldn't really point to a thing why and then later on it discovered that there was a whole heap of abuse and stuff in their life which was buried and buried deep and this was the way of bringing that to the forefront of you need to deal with this and that person didn't even remember what happened but when they did you know, it was a huge thing to deal with in their lives, but it did bring a huge amount of change. But it only leaked out during this sort of night terrors and fear because that was how it could bring the, the attention to there's something to deal with. And eventually they did deal with it. And the night terrors faded away. You know, so that could be the soul saying, hey, there's an area here that is in pain and it needs attention it needs healing you know so that can also be something that happens during you know during dreams you have a chapter in your book the eschatology of the restoration of all things hey, yeah, about creative a sonship <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah it's a it's a big book it's over 800 pages yeah but i find that uh chapter particularly i mean really great uh creative sonship hmm. the section you talk about being multi-dimensional reality mm. and quantumly entangled. Mm. And um, what's really cool about this part, and I, and I want to ask you this question, um, specifically right here, the father spoke to you. And, and I'm just going to read this right here. Yeah, so he sure. said, so you talked about how much joy you had when you realized you were uh, quantumly entangled in all these different uh, realities. And, and that is our our um, inheritance as sons, of course, right? Yeah. And so father spoke and he said this, son, see how easy it is to just be. And this is just a glimpse of what it is to be I am, that I am, that you will ascend to when you become an ascended father. Yeah. Son, learn to become aware of multidimensional reality, but always stay at rest, living in love, joy, and peace within balanced by the tree of life between spirit, soul, and body. But I, I was just intrigued by Father encouraging you to press into, you know, be an ascended father, you know, mm -hmm. um, and and um, just wanted to uh, get your perspective on it, where, where you're mm -hmm. at with regard to that, and, um, and how that's out working in your life right now. Um, I think you're being I, fond of a father right here, as you're helping yeah. us, mentoring us to be uh, the fullness of sons ourselves. So, yeah, I mean, I would say that that was an encouragement to continue the journey. Um, and that might not be until ages to come. I don't know. But I can learn what the father is like from a relationship with him, how he treats me as a son. 
if I'm going to be an ascended father, how am I going to treat people or beings or whatever? I, I'm learning what it is to love unconditionally. Therefore, I'm learning how the father treats me. The father's good. The father wants the best. The father's always there for me. So I'm learning from the father what it is to be fathered. Then if I should ever be in a place uh, as an ascended father, which means that not that I'm not a son, but I have a function as a father towards something that I may create. I don't know. You know, it may be that that's part of future creative expression that I create something and then act as a father towards it. So I'm very careful to live in a union and oneness with the father that is a heart to heart, that cardiogenosis. You know, I don't have conversations with the father as I once did, because the father's taken me to a level of communicating heart to heart most of the time. Uh, but I appreciate the father's heart and I appreciate how he reveals what he's doing so I can come into agreement and cooperation with what he's doing. So the journey for me is to spend as much time um, engaged heart to heart with the father that I learned how the father fathers me and then that will get, stand me in good stead for whatever being an ascended father means i mean to the you know take it to the extreme you know you could create your own universe at one stage in the future but then how are you going to act towards that not that you would be a god in the sense of because you wouldn't want people worshiping you um, so it's not sort of directly in the same sense of, well, if, if God is the creator and we were, if I was the creator, I'm still got a creator. I still I have a relationship with God, which is going to be part of my fathering. Whereas God doesn't, God is God. So it's never going to be that I'm going to be a God of some universe because that for me would not be, um, in line with my relationship with god as father but i think he is teaching us to have responsibility towards creation to act fatherly towards creation in caring for it and looking after it um and there are things that there have been creative things that i've involved with that have not needed me to ongoingly pursue being a father towards those that were created because they i only responded to a petition to do something i didn't think well great i want to create some of these today you know it wasn't like that it was like can you create some more of these and i'm like i'm not sure can i um, i'm going to check that out with the father and he said well yeah you know how to create and so i did but then those who asked me were responsible for what they did with them not me so I, I'm, I'm only sort of looking at what could be as a possibility that perhaps if we were in a place and then i do think in a creative way so if i was to create a planet what would it look like you know what would how would i create it what what creative expression of me would it be in the most positive sense? Uh, and I do think that way sometimes, which I think is part of me beginning to think differently. It's not that I've got this great burning desire to birth a galaxy or whatever. Although I have, you know, I, initially in the early days, God showed me some of that. Um, but I do feel that a being an ascended father is a father. So what does being a father really mean from being like a godfather perspective? Um, now, I, you know, I have my own issues with my own children in terms of I'm not a perfect father and they have their issues with me, which don't always make it easy in that dynamic because you know, I've made lots of mistakes in my life and, you know, fathering in that sense would have been part of that 
you know, so I would have, I could look back and think, well, if I knew what I knew then, as I do now, I would have done things very differently. Well, I didn't. So I did my best with the limited resources I had. And as I've discovered my own sonship, it has given me a different perspective on being a father. And, you know, and of course, God doesn't force anything on us. He always wants the best for us and will always try and work out so that the best happens to us, even even when we don't do the best of things in, you know, which are the things he would really desire us to do. So there's a lot of grace and mercy involved, but he does allow us to go and do what we want to do. You know, and he, his mercy is there so we don't suffer the consequences of doing what we're going to do. And I feel that in some ways towards some of my children, would I want them to be doing what they're doing? No, if I was to be honest, but am I going to not love them in doing it? But I'm also not going to try and manipulate them and control them not to do it because that is an unconditional love. So sometimes you just have to let your children go you know but i'm always wanting the best for them and so i i feel the more i get to know god as father and the more i understand my sonship the future of what that means to be an ascended father um may become more and more revealed now it could be that we sit on a council with god as ascended fathers who knows and we're in discussion with him with how things are going to be and we're included in the decisions rather than being independent and i never want to be independent of god in any decision i ever make really or anything that i'm doing so i couldn't say exactly what a, an ascended father is going to be but it is going to go beyond what just purely being a son is whatever reason whatever meaning that has and i want to learn as much as i can from my dad from a heavenly perspective so that i can be ready for whatever that might be you know that's that's you know all i can say which is why i think i'm focusing and have focused for the last few years on unconditional love and limitless grace and triumphant mercy and you know now looking at the restoring of first love and restoring of my origin in god because if i can know where i came from and that relationship and the union of that relationship then that is going to give me much more of a correct perspective of how to view things and see things for the future you know um so it's, it's an interesting question i know god has spoken to me about it quite a number of times first it was like almost it just sort of didn't really register because it was like hmm, i don't know what that means you know and then because he repeated it a few times um and then because it was linked to being multi-dimensional and operating free from space time limitations you know i sort of thought oh maybe maybe this has a creative element to it perhaps and because he's shown me the process of the cradle of life and you know, becoming a voice of God and then, you know, you know, operating in the chamber of creation and that stuff. It's like how light responds to us when we speak with the voice of God and the authority of God. You know, so I do understand, you know, God called things that be not as if they are and they were. Um, and I have done that in certain instances, but I can't do it in every instance. You know, it's like, but I have done it sometimes. Uh, and I think we're all on the sort of the training process, you know. I mean, down here, I mean, kingdom people, you say, well, we're in training for reigning, you know. And I don't think they had any idea what reigning was, but I think they thought more of it as an earthly thing rather than, you know, beyond thing. But we are in training, you know, and I think I want to learn and I want to em enjoy the journey of learning uh, particularly when it comes with my dad you know i love that relationship with my dad it's uh, it's an intimate one i feel his pleasure 
and i know if i could make people or or whatever beings feel the pleasure that i feel from god that will be a good thing so how could i do that i don't know exactly but i know if i feel god's pleasure i feel god's pleasure when i'm in creation i feel god's pleasure in that way and it it's a joyful thing so any environment that i was responsible for creating i wanted to be absolutely filled with joy and peace and love obviously you know um you know now would i make people with free will to go and choose to do something above be like oh i know i yes almost i know i understand the whole thing it was well if you don't have free will then you can't choose to love so it's not love but i don't want someone to love me i would still if i was creating something i would want them to love god who has created me so there's a difference to that and i think that would be something to ponder and i do ponder it somewhat you know it's like if i had total creative choice yeah would i want to create a mess that we've got then i'd be responsible for it you know and in a sense being an ascended father is not god so i i don't think i have the capacity to to be connected to billions and billions of people all at the same time and process everything all at the same time unless there's a total transformation of my mind <laughs> at the moment that would be like oh you know bruce i don't know if you've ever seen the film bruce almighty and it's like suddenly he's like he loves all the oh i can do this and do that and then all of a sudden it's like what are all these voices what are these voices well they're praying how are you going to answer their prayers oh no i didn't sign up for that you know so i don't think i don't think it means i'm going to be like god in that sense but the more we become like him i guess the greater our capacity might be um but yeah it's an interesting one um you know i i do enjoy the multi-dimensional ability to be therefore at rest in me enjoying life here without having to go cognitively do everything that i'm doing in the heavens you know it would be impossible to do it i couldn't be in eight places doing eight things in eight eight places you know it's like it's not not possible to do all that one after the other in a linear fashion so being free from linearity and free to to be multi-dimensional was you know a joy when i discovered it now i was doing all that before i ever knew i was doing it now i had an inkling that things were going on because i was receiving insight information revelation from my spirit that was certainly not something i ever remembered engaging in so i was sort of aware that something more must be going on but until the father actually showed me hey you're here and this is what you're doing here and you're also here and this is what you're doing here and you're also here and here and here i was like wow now they were all familiar places it's not something that was beyond my experience but actually being in that state of multi-dimensional connection at when i when god spoke to me about it it was like because i think he said look you've had a glimpse of these things but now i'm taking the blinkers off and i want to show you what this reality really is then i was like wow isn't that awesome and now i can relax and enjoy being here because i know all of that is being at work there without me needing to go and oh we're gonna do this today gonna to do that today it's who i am which is i think what i really discovered that was the key to it you know this is who i am and you know when god says well i am that i am i know that i am who god made me to be and i only have to be in i am to be able to outwork that not i am independent no i am in the image of i am and if i really get that reality of who he made me to be what my true identity is in that wondrous union of intimacy and relationship then i can be at rest in the outworking of it and therefore not worried anxious you know rushed or oh, i've got to do this or you know life is taken on a much more joyful enjoyable connection to creation than when i was learning to do everything i was doing 
you know, because I did learn how to do it all. You know, I think back and think, God, that's an awful lot of stuff I learned, you know, but that was the journey God took me on. And I, I learned it. I knew how to do it. Then I didn't realize I was doing it until I was shown. Then it was like, oh, yeah, this this is this is how we've got this amazing capacity to go beyond what I could ever have imagined or thought of me trying to do in my own understanding. You know, but then I look back and think, yeah, this this is the learning process to get me to that place and i rejoice in that and I'm very thankful to god for all that he did to bring me to that place where now life is lived in a much more joyful peaceful restful way you know and i do feel i feel that his pleasure in me enjoying life then i live quite a simple life you know it's like I enjoy being in the garden. I enjoy being in the workshop. I enjoy hanging out. You know, I enjoy just having fun and, and, you know, and I laugh a lot. You know, I laugh so much more than I ever did. You know, it's like, I really do have, you know, when we have a very similar sense of humor, so we laugh together a lot and we laugh at each other a lot because we, we know each other. So we laugh at our little ways, you know, and it, it's a a sense where, you know, that is, it's a, you know, I never ever lived that way before. Now, you know, that, that makes life really enjoyable and fun. You know, if, if we, we laugh lots every day over lots of things, you know, and it, and it, it is, it is, well, you know, God laughs. You know, he's he's a he's a god who laughs, and I think people think he's miserable, you know, and he's looking at the world, oh, worrying and being anxious. No, he he is he is full of loving emotion and and all of that. I know I know he's laughed at me a lot. You know, I've brought in much mirth in my life from what I thought and things I've done and the scrapes I've got into and other things, and you know, and I know he was laughing because it was amusing you know i didn't find it very amusing at the time but now now i think oh yeah i i you know there's a there's a picture that i had um i used sometimes and it was a lion with it with its paw over its eyes like this and i thought that must be god a lot when he's looking at me he's like oh no what is he up to now you know um but I think I now feel more and more in tune as I'm sort of more living in a state of that union with God's heart, that it is now more I feel and sense God all the time, you know, which is which is really, really a joyful way of living and not something I would have thought possible because I wouldn't. You only know what you know, don't you? So you don't know there's something better until you discover something better. So I didn't know that my life could be like this until I'm living my life like this. It's not something I ask God for because I wouldn't have known what to ask for. You know, I could have in general terms, I guess, asked, but not in specifics. And now the specifics is something I'm very grateful and thankful for in living that sort of attitude of thanksgiving and gratitude because i appreciate it so much you know and it, it is a joyful life to be lived if you enjoy these videos would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help thank you very much